Here is my video about what happens when you mix a Grignard reagent with an acid chloride. That is a carbon chain that has a double bonded oxygen and a chlorine on the end. Kind of like a carboxylic acid, but a chloride. That's why we call it an acid chloride. Get it? When you mix those with Grignard reagents, you'll end up with a tertiary alcohol, and I'm going to show you exactly how right now. Spoiler alert, the carbon is connected to R, and two of these R prime groups, however long they are, and this O is going to turn into an OH. But let's see how that happens. Well, here's my acid chloride, here's my Grignard reagent. If you know anything about Grignard reagents, you know you can treat this as though it was an R prime with a negative charge, because it will go in and attack the delta plus carbonyl carbon. That pushes the electrons from the pi bond to become a lone pair on oxygen, and you end up with the RCCl connected to this O minus here, and you already have attached your R prime. This minus charge is somewhat mitigated by the MGX in a complex. No need to worry about that. Lots of textbooks and mechanisms omit it. But the O is not very happy as that O minus, and it wants to reform itself. The CL is kicked out in the process. This lone pair that got kicked out as a pi bond before reforms the pi bond and the CL disappears in the process. This leaves us with a ketone because we've reformed the double bonded oxygen and the R prime is here to stay. You do end up with a Cl minus, but remember you also have this MgX with a plus charge as well. Again, these are waste products if you ask me. Now, here's where it gets magical. If we add a second equivalent of MgX, and this should be done in the same step. There's no reason to break it up into two steps. As long as you have R prime MgX Grignard reagent around, that R prime, I'll use a different color, will attack the carbonyl carbon again. And why wouldn't it? It's just as attractive as it was in an earlier step. So we end up with RC and the original R prime and a new R prime attached to the same carbon. Let me go back here. I forgot that the pi bond has to be broken. We can't violate the octet rule for carbon after all. And we are left with O minus again. Hey, that's just how it goes. It is again mitigated by another MGX complex, but again, lots of people, teachers and textbooks omit that in the mechanism. What really matters is that in the end, when you mix it with aqueous acid, you're going to protonate that O minus, and you're left with a carbon connected to three alkyl groups that makes it tertiary with an OH group, which makes it an alcohol. Look at that. We've turned the acid chloride with the R chain into a tertiary alcohol with two R prime chains also attached to it. If you ever need a tertiary alcohol where two of the chains are the same, I highly recommend making it with an acid chloride and the Grignard reagent. Pretty sweet. Would you agree? You should. Let me give you an example. I will ask you to make this tertiary alcohol. I'm going to make this messed up. I'm going to include two cyclohexyl groups. All right, I notice that I need to create a tertiary alcohol and two of my chains are the same. They're both cyclohexyl substituents. What I need to do to create this is to start with my acid chloride. Now I can create that a bunch of ways, but that's not part of this particular video. Step one, well, <laughs> step one will be to add a Grignard reagent. That Grignard reagent needs to have this cyclohexyl group on it. It's connected to an Mg and maybe an iodine. Could be a bromine or any other halogen. The way that you would create that, by the way, is to just take a regular old, or rather the exact same carbon chain with the halogen, 
and you add magnesium in dry ether. That's going to help you create that. You add that to here, it'll create that complex where uh, you have the O minus. And as an emphasis, I'm going to need two of these for every one of those. Stoichiometric amounts mean I need double the amount. And anyways, step two is to just add aqueous acid to help protonate the O minus that is produced. If I start with this and I add my Grignard reagent and then I add acidified water, <laughs> uh, aqueous acid, I will end up with that tertiary alcohol. Man, I love organic synthesis. I didn't back in the day though. That's why I'm helping you understand it. Hey, best of luck.